Jen Yu, hurry, go. I'll hold him back, you go. Senior Jing Yuan shouted loudly to me. With your martial arts skills, you won't stand a chance. Get out of here. The door was rammed open, and I stumbled out, the sound of gunfire erupting behind me. The door, now riddled with bullet holes from the ricochets, indicated that Senior Jing Yuan's martial arts skills were indeed lacking. He wouldn't be able to stop my crazed father. If I didn't rescue Senior Jing Yuan, my father's rage would know no bounds. Thinking about this, I shivered and hesitated at the door. I couldn't let Senior Jing Yuan, who had come from afar, sacrifice himself on my behalf. Run, quick! Senior Jing Yuan, who had always been cheerful, was now hoarse and struggling. It was evident that he couldn't withstand the extraordinary strength of my father. With determination, I ran as fast as I could, hoping that he would still be alive when I returned with reinforcements. Grand! Grandfather! I crashed through the gate of my grandfather's courtyard, abandoning my usual composure. I rushed toward my grandfather, who remained calm and continued writing with his brush. I grabbed his shoulder and said, Grandfather, please, quickly. Grandfather stood as steady as a mountain, not even glancing at me, but smiling slightly. He said, Speak slowly. If you're in this state tonight, your grandfather will be the only one to die. My heart trembled as I thought of the incredibly important matter tonight, and I broke into a cold sweat. But Dad, he suddenly forced me to give up my studies and join the army. Grandfather, what should I do? Join the army? Join the army now, and you'll be going to the Long Chain Peninsula? Grandfather quickly understood, accurately guessing my father's intentions. In recent months, the Yang Huang and Jian Luo countries had been engaged in intense battles on the Long Chain Peninsula. As an active duty soldier of Yang Huang, my father not only applied to go to the battlefield but also wanted to drag his own son along. This patriotic extremist was about to push his own son to the front lines, a life-threatening situation. Perhaps that wasn't the only issue, what about my education? I had just started my sophomore year after summer vacation. If I went to the battlefield and became a soldier, I would have to drop out of school. What would I do in the future? I treasured my education and had hopes of attending college. I poured out all my worries in one breath and let out a long sigh, sitting under the grapevine and absent-mindedly touching my glasses frames, waiting for my grandfather's advice. Grandfather put down his brush, turned to look at me, and still had a smile on his face. Don't want to go? I nodded vigorously. All right. Grandfather agreed decisively, which was unlike his usual character. When I widened my eyes in surprise, he leisurely walked out the door, leaving me with his back. He said, prepare for tonight's events here. I'll handle your father's matter. I stared blankly as he disappeared from view, unable to believe how easily he agreed to help me. What was so special about today? Could there be a conspiracy? Please don't blame me for thinking this way about my closest family, because our family is quite peculiar. Our family is a renowned lineage in the field of medicine, with a history that can be traced back to the end of the era of God's layers, if not even further. With a history spanning over 3,000 years, generation after generation has passed down the knowledge of medicine within our family. However, what few people know is that the martial arts of the Zhong family, my family, are of a level that is by no means inferior to the astonishing medical arts that deal with matters of life and death and can even mend flesh and bones. Our foundation is the Tao of nurturing life through medicine, drawing from the wisdom of a hundred schools of thought, incorporating Confucian virtue, Taoist serenity, and Buddhist emptiness. Over the span of a century, Several generations of elites have continuously refined and elevated our family's ultimate technique, the one-breath unity, 
to an astounding level. Derived from this is the chart of the One Breath Elixir Path, which is said to possess extraordinary powers capable of influencing the very fabric of existence. Despite our immense treasure trove of knowledge, our ancestors remained low-key, displaying their medical skills discreetly and passing down our family's ultimate techniques in silence. Whether during times of prosperity, when our family numbered over a thousand members, or during its decline, when only two or three remained, or during the fluctuations in between, our family's mastery of both medicine and martial arts has never been lost or dispersed, all the way down to my grandfather's generation. My grandfather seemed relatively normal for a member of the Zhong family. He was, after all, a renowned physician. Aside from his peculiar friendships and his pangshang for visiting strange places, there was little to criticize about him. However, why did my father, under his guidance, turn out to be so eccentric? By the time the family legacy reached my father's generation, it appeared that our fate had run its course. From a young age, my father showed little interest in studying medicine and was fascinated instead by the family's closely guarded secret, the One Breath Unity, Qi Gong. At the age of five, he was already causing headaches for everyone as a little troublemaker. At ten, he kicked down a tree as thick as a bowl's mouth. At twelve, he sent local high school bullies running with their heads in their hands. By fifteen, he had become the unrivaled kingpin of the local underworld, facing off against both street gangs and martial artists. In despair, my grandfather sent him off to the military in the hopes of reforming him and providing discipline. Little did my grandfather, an expert in astrology, realize that the year my father was born was also the zodiac year of all brave and ruthless individuals. The outbreak of the Eastern Regional Conflict provided my father with an unparalleled opportunity. In the self-defense counterattack against the Vedic forces in the Western military region, Martial prowess was the surest path to achieving military honors. After nine months of warfare, this naturally violent man had accumulated enough merits to become a second lieutenant. He was then admitted to the country's elite special operations unit. Over the next ten years, he achieved remarkable feats in battle. By the time he was twenty-eight, according to his official records, he had the appearance of a twenty-five-year-old. With the rank of a major, he shamelessly abducted my mother, a renowned expert in computational analysis, during that year's Eastern Front War. She had earned the nickname Eleven She, the legendary beauty. In his 26th year, in the year 2035, I was born, a person born under unfortunate circumstances. For months after my birth, the government secretly conscripted my mother, an expert in computer analysis, for a top-secret research mission. My father miraculously became the security commander for that mission. Although they were husband and wife, they went off to work together, leaving me behind to be cared for by my grandfather. I can only recall fragmented memories of my life before the age of five. The only evidence of my misfortune that remained deeply embedded in my mind was the chart of the One Breath Elixir Path. I also remember that when I saw my parents again at the age of five, counting from one to ten seemed like a Herculean task. The horrifying aftermath of the One Breath Elixir Path. At that time, my father almost drove himself insane. Moreover, even my mother, a staunch believer in scientific principles, had her convictions shattered. My father and grandfather had fought from the ground to the sky and back, demolishing three houses made of green bricks, ruining a yard full of medicinal herbs, and jointly smashing my mother's small sedan that she had driven over. What kind of family is this? My mother lamented, and I couldn't help but agree. At least I knew that they were both extraordinary individuals. Under their relentless pressure, I endured ten hours of martial training each day, with less than three hours of rest and sleep. Over the course of ten years, I almost lost sight of my greater goals. Most of the time, 
I simply hoped to survive it all. Completing my education seemed like an incredibly challenging task. Both my grandfather and father were exceptional individuals. Last month, the event I attended, a gathering of eccentric individuals far beyond my imagination, confirmed this. It also exposed me to another world, a world where there existed a group of individuals beyond the perception of ordinary people. This world is truly fascinating. However, my father and grandfather are even more remarkable. Can I easily believe in such figures? Gen Yu A bald figure reflected the noonday sun as Jetian Temple's 55th generation young master Jing Yuan burst in. I had met him at the Eastern Sea Martial Arts Tournament last month, and this time, he arrived in his capacity as the supervisor of the high-rank martial arts tournament. However, he ran into this situation. Jing Yuan, are you okay? I jumped up, looking at the bruises on his face. Jing Yuan still had that cheerful smile, but the deep dark circles under his left eye made him appear quite comical. As expected of the Mad Dragon, your skills are far beyond mine. My grandfather followed him, patting his back and turning to me, saying the words I most wanted to hear, the situation has been resolved. Tonight, you should focus on protecting the law. Jin Yuan, as the supervisor, you should also do your best. Jin Yuan seemed quite afraid of my grandfather. As I let out a relieved sigh, he bowed and said, Jin Yuan understands. The high rank martial arts tournament, a term I still couldn't fully comprehend. Last month, on the distant Eastern Sea, the grand martial arts event was still fresh in my memory, and today, a competition similar to the Eastern Sea Martial Arts Tournament but of higher caliber would take place tonight. This must be the High Rank Martial Arts Tournament. This competitive martial arts event, involving 24 participants, likely represented the highest level of combat. Their methods left me in awe. Different backgrounds, different sects, different regions, all of them were separated by vast distances. How would they fight? As someone who knew nothing about this, I humbly sought guidance from my grandfather and Jing Yuan. The Way and the Vital Spirit The Way The Vital Spirit These two terms sounded extremely abstract to me, having received ten years of conventional education. According to my father, my martial skills had almost surpassed those of someone my age, but when it came to the Way, I was still a novice. Whenever I had even the slightest doubt about the way of the mind, the techniques I used lost their effectiveness. In this lifetime, it seemed that I had no hope of mastering the way. At midnight, when a wisp of light smoke drifted into the night sky, my grandfather looked skyward with his hands behind his back. His entire body gathered its vitality within, and a distant sound resonated, the clear chime of a bell. It was unclear which formidable master had begun to exercise their abilities, as their inner energy reverberated gently. The sound carried over a hundred kilometers, sounding even more melodious in the night, and added a sense of serenity. In the sky, a momentary flash of brilliance occurred before my grandfather slowly settled into a cross-legged position. Jing Yuan, who appeared serious, also sat down with his eyes closed. However, I knew that he was using his years of dedicated Buddhist meditation to protect my grandfather's body. Following their example, I too sat down, allowing my consciousness to naturally extend outward. Through my grandfather, who seemed like an empty vessel at this moment, I rose into the night sky. My consciousness experienced something indescribable, it was a battle of the vital spirit. Under the submerged flow of my consciousness, I felt the vast and boundless power in the night sky clashing. Purple lightning streaked across, radiance shone in all directions, and half of the sky was transformed into a colorful display under the surging power. It was unbelievable. The starlight and moonlight paled in comparison. With my keen eyesight and mental perception, 
I could barely make out faint lines of color that flashed in the high sky. These interwoven lines formed a magnificent and enormous net that covered the entire sky. Afterward, an immense force burst outwards, and the colorful light vanished in an instant. At that moment, the night sky returned to its tranquility, but the battle in the sky was still ongoing, albeit inside a barrier. Indeed, it was a barrier, stretching across a vast expanse of the sky, carving out space for combat and rupturing the fabric of time and space. I sighed. The energy required for such a barrier was astronomical, but the mental fortitude to control this energy was even more astonishing. These individuals were indeed extraordinary, true monsters. Real monsters. The sunlight bathed the earth as I bid farewell to Jinyuan at the capital airport, where he had completed his mission successfully. The mysterious battle of last night seemed to fade away. Unlike Jing Yuan, who was still shocked by the events of last night, my interest in this matter was far less passionate. The extraordinary spectacle of last night, with its flashing starlight and earth-shaking thunder, had left me deeply shaken. But upon closer reflection, what did all this have to do with me? Even if I were to master such skills, what would I use them for? To protect my family and country? To accumulate wealth and prosperity? To get married and have children? Ridiculous. Was it even enjoyable to practice such skills? My grandfather, who returned victorious from last night's battle, told me that in a melee with 24 participants, a momentary lapse could result in the destruction of one's vital spirit, an enjoyable prospect? I shook my head. It just wasn't worth it. Instead of pondering such matters, I should focus on how to face my unpredictable father today. Reflecting on my own mindset, I couldn't help but smile. Until someone reminded me with a strange tone, Nia, what are you daydreaming about? Your mouth is as wide open as a watermelon. The strange and peculiar sound was gradually getting closer. Without needing to look, I knew it had to be my childhood friend, Li Hunzi, also known as Li Jiang. The fact that he dared to use the nickname only my elementary school classmates knew about showed just how fearless and audacious this troublemaker was. Back in elementary school, my appearance was nothing like it is now, nearly identical to my dad. At that time, I resembled my mom and could easily pass for a pretty little girl if I tied my hair in braids and wore a dress. My skin was as fair as milk. It was Lee Hunzi who, in front of the entire class, called me, Nier. That single call brought me infamy. For the next month or so, everyone in the class called me, Nier. It was unbearable. After all my patience had been exhausted, I smashed the desk in front of me in front of the teacher, my classmates, and, of course, Li Jiang. I was eight years old at the time. After that, no one dared to call me by my nickname again, except for Li Hunzi. Even after I beat him so badly that not even his mother could recognize him, he still continued to address me as Nier with a smile on his face. I admired his thick-skinned nature. I realized that even my six years of practicing the immovable as a mountain, Qigong couldn't compare to his resilience. Since he had earned my admiration, he became the only exception. However, no matter how you looked at it, being called near by a grown man was far from enjoyable. Especially now, even though I couldn't claim to be incredibly manly, I was still a refined young man who wore gold-rimmed glasses. Having him call me that every day, where could I hide my face? My gaze peered at him through the lenses and I contemplated whether I should kick him off that newfangled electromagnetic-assisted bicycle. I thought about it but ultimately didn't take action. If I injured him in a fall, I wouldn't feel bad, but with this kid's thick skin, he might use it as an excuse to make me buy him a couple of bottles of mineral water, and that would truly pain my wallet. Li Jiang stopped his bicycle in front of me with a grin, patted the back seat, and, 
true to his character, had a smug look on his face. Neo, hop on. We have a date. I'll take you to Dawai, there's a good arcade there. What nerve. In the end, I still kicked him off, losing ten bucks in the process. Under the old man's smiling face as he sold cold drinks, this scoundrel Li Jiang held a bottle of Nonfu Spring in one hand and a bottle of Laos Han in the other, looking utterly satisfied. I held a bottle of generic cola in my hand. I didn't like the taste of mineral water, and the only benefit it had for me was that I could use it to splatter people without having to do their laundry. Of course, I couldn't let myself spend money. Nia, where did you disappear to write after the break? I went to your place several times, but you were nowhere to be found. Were you off practicing? I don't see you looking like a divine immortal yet. Among my peers, Hunzi was the only friend I recognized in my heart, and he was also the only one acknowledged by my dad and grandpa, the only person qualified to know about those extraordinary events. He may seem frivolous on the outside, but he's got a sharp tongue, and when it comes to friends, he's wholehearted. That's probably his only virtue. Grandpa said that for people like us to get closer to the world of ordinary people, we need friends who know the ins and outs of things, and Li Jiang is that kind of person. Usually, I don't hide anything from him, and this matter was no different. Besides, this story is worth telling in detail, and my thoughts raced back to that night with the waves crashing in the vast sea and the moon hanging high. We skimmed the waves, freely racing on the sea, young martial artists of our age, regardless of right or wrong regardless of sex, drinking the essence of the mountains and rivers in that immortal wine. When we got drunk, we played our swords, talked about martial arts, and the vast sea became our joyful stage. As the sun rose, sword chi and blade lights crisscrossed on the sea, palm winds and fist forces resonated together, and hundreds of young experts from various schools displayed their skills, competing for the title of Supreme Master of the Thousand Peaks, a title I still can't comprehend to this day. The sky, the sea, and the ocean floor were turned upside down by us young people. Under the influence of alcohol, I shed the last remnants of my scholarly facade and enthusiastically engaged in battles. We clashed swords, broke blades, exchanged palm strikes, and shattered fists. Finally, with a move called Heavenly Strike, Ocean Roar, I shook the sea's surface to amazement, and amidst the surging waves, I inexplicably earned the title, making my Zhong family the three-time holder of this honor over more than a hundred years. And last night, in a battle that followed the East Sea Martial Gathering, but at a higher level, Grandpa, with his mysterious and unpredictable spiritual power, brought another honor to the Zhong family. I don't feel proud of these honors. They were just moments of indulgence that brought me unprecedented pleasure. A husband should act in the world this way. There are actually monsters like you guys in the world, and so many of them. Over two thousand, my goodness. But these are only from China. What about foreign ones? Hans's question hit the mark. I remembered some foreign individuals with suspicious motives I had observed before leaving. They were clearly spying on our martial gathering, and their skills were quite extraordinary. Regarding my question, my dad responded much like Hunzi, the world is vast, with diverse talents. As long as they don't cause trouble for you, why bother about what they are doing? Hunzi nodded vigorously, feeling a deep connection with my words. Hunzi was Hunzi because he didn't meddle in others' affairs, that was his guiding principle. Like the matter I had just mentioned, I could guarantee that when we met again in a few days, he would probably have forgotten all the details but remembered the gist. Nevertheless, he would never utter a word about it. Indeed, after chatting about this topic for a while, he quickly changed the subject and, in the end, left me aside, haggling with the old man at the cold drink stall spewing words with such intensity that he seemed like he wanted to spit out all the water he had just drunk. 
I was bored and had already shifted my attention inside the shop, casually surveying the place. In recent years, the capital's environmental development had been remarkable. Beyond the city and into the suburbs, apart from a few scattered villa areas, everything was covered in greenery. This cold drink stall, run by the old man, was likely the only one within a kilometer, and business was doing well in this weather. The shop was quite large and neatly arranged, with around 20 to 30 customers inside, yet it was surprisingly quiet. However, looking at the old man, he didn't seem like he relied on this business for a living. He appeared more like someone who was idle and didn't have much else to do. I could gather some information from the bits and pieces I overheard during their conversation. His children were all responsible and filial, and their income was decent. And they were really good-looking. What does any of this have to do with anything? I shook my head, feeling puzzled by Hans's words. What was he talking about? Wasn't he afraid of being laughed at by the old man? And then I heard the old man agreeing with him, this kid has a good eye, he's got taste. Dirty old man. I finally understood why he got along so well with Hunzi. I wanted to turn around and confirm which unfortunate girl passing by had caught the attention of these two perverts, but my neck. My neck couldn't turn back. What did I see? Was it her graceful figure as she approached? Her pure white skin as smooth as jade? Her proud nose with a hint of arrogance? Her lips, ever so slightly curved into a smile, or maybe, her spirited eyes hidden behind sunglasses? Or perhaps, I saw nothing at all. My brain couldn't contain her beauty. My mind exploded. Despite having a brain that could remember the chart of the one breath elixir path at the age of one, I didn't have the capacity to hold the delicate and pure beauty of the girl who could only appear in the world. Her long skirt fluttered as her graceful figure passed by me and entered the cold drinks shop. My gaze lowered, first noticing her slender neck, then her delicate waist, and those perfectly smooth legs. My heart raced, and a rush of heat surged up. It was at this moment that I realized my own loss of composure, and my face reddened. I quickly shifted my gaze to the wall. The girl walked into the shop, passing by me. A cool and pleasant fragrance reached me, making my heart tremble again. My face turned even redder, and I wanted to carefully examine the beauty in front of me, but I couldn't muster the courage. It wasn't until her pure gaze, hidden behind sunglasses, fell on my face that I stopped breathing for a moment. Three seconds later, I finally regained my composure. I gave her an awkward smile. She responded with a smile and pulled out the chair Hunzi had been sitting in. Can I sit here? I heard Hunza's loud inhale from the entrance. It reminded me that I should have told her there were people here. However, at that moment, I could only nod like a dumbfounded bird, my face nearly burning. Are you? Zhong Jenyu, right? I'm Su Yi, the student council president of Lan Guangsu Clan Academy. Nice to meet you. She smiled as brilliantly as the sun, extending her hand to shake mine lightly on the table. I felt somewhat inferior, her demeanor and grace seemed to overshadow me. However, I had never seen her before. What did she want with me? Well, Meeting you here is quite a coincidence. Originally, I was planning to visit your mansion. Her words left me puzzled. I scratched my head, wanting to say something but feeling like I couldn't find the right words. Let's talk about something else. Can I order something? I heard that the green bean soup here is quite delicious. The old man, who had been watching the two of us for a while, grinned and replied, Of course. Our green bean soup is the best in the capital. Su Yi nodded with satisfaction. As she ordered the green bean soup, my gaze couldn't help but fall on her hand. 
The jade ring she wore on her finger was indeed eye-catching, just like the beauty herself. My heart raced again. As I sat there, I suddenly realized that Hansi was no longer by my side. I quickly looked around and saw him at the far corner of the shop, chatting animatedly with the old man. I couldn't help but sigh. That guy was always like this, always capable of finding common ground with anyone. Whether it was an old man selling cold drinks or a beautiful student council president, he could strike up a conversation and get along easily. How enviable! As I was lost in thought, Suyi's green bean soup arrived. She took a sip and seemed to enjoy it. It's really delicious. Zhong Jenyu, you should try some too. I was about to decline when Hansa's voice came from behind me, Hey, I ordered green bean soup too. I turned to see him holding a bowl of green bean soup, and his eyes lit up when he saw Suyi. Miss Su, long time no see. What brings you here? Su Yi smiled at him, seemingly accustomed to his straightforwardness. I heard that Zhong Jenyu was here, so I wanted to meet him. It's a coincidence that I ran into you as well. Han Zi chuckled. Well, it's a small world. Zhong Jenyu, we're lucky today to have such a beautiful lady join us. Cheers. He raised his bowl of green bean soup, and Su Yi and I followed suit. We clinked bowls, and I couldn't help but feel a bit awkward. Hunzi was enjoying this situation a little too much. As we chatted over green bean soup, I learned that Su Yi was indeed from the Lan Guangsu Clan Academy, which was known for its powerful martial arts techniques. She was here on a mission to investigate some strange occurrences in the capital, and she had heard that my family was knowledgeable about supernatural phenomena. I tried to provide her with some information and insights, but I couldn't help but feel self-conscious in her presence. Her beauty and grace were truly captivating, and it was hard to concentrate on the conversation. Hunzi, on the other hand, seemed completely at ease and kept the conversation flowing. He shared stories and anecdotes about our family's encounters with supernatural beings, making Suyi laugh and nod in agreement. As the conversation continued, I couldn't help but wonder why Suyi had come to see me specifically. Was there something important she needed from me, or was it just a casual visit? Either way, I couldn't deny that her presence had added an unexpected twist to my day. And so, as we sat in the cold drinks shop, Sipping green bean soup and sharing stories, I couldn't help but feel that this encounter was the beginning of something extraordinary. Little did I know how deeply it would affect my life and the mysteries that would unravel in the days to come.